everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Noah Kelman and I am here to teach you everything that I know about modern jazz piano. Today we're going to look at the tune Giant Steps and look at every single thing you need to know to master this song. This is a song that is infamous for its difficulty, so we're gonna break down a perfect step-by-step -step method for you to master it. And honestly, if you follow these steps, I'm personally fairly confident that you are going to get this under your fingers. This is the exact method that I use to master this song. Really quick, if you are new to my channel, please consider clicking the subscribe button and hitting the bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss any more videos just like this one. And with that said, let's jump right into it. So first step, in my opinion, is just to get the bass line in your head. So we're gonna literally play the bass line and even sing it at the same time. That is number one, and it's a step that sometimes we don't dedicate enough time to. We wanna really get this into our brain and start to really hear the movement. And apologize in advance for my singing, but here we go. B, D, G, B flat, E flat. And notice I can really hear the notes as I get there. So you want to be able to even do this without being at the piano. D, D, G, B flat, E flat, A, D, G, B flat, E flat, F sharp, B, F, B flat, E flat, A, D, G, D flat, F sharp, B, forgetting the note names, um, F, B flat, E flat, C sharp, F sharp, right? So you should be able to do that now just in your head. B, D, G, B flat, E flat, A, D, G, B flat, E flat, F sharp, B, F, B flat, E flat, A, D, G, D flat, F sharp, B, F, B flat, E flat, D flat, F sharp, B. Okay, so I got a little flat there, but I think more or less I got back to where I was supposed to be. Now, I know I was kind of saying something like, sometimes I was saying C sharp, sometimes D flat. For me, that's not super important. What's really important here is not naming the right enharmonic equivalents, but actually getting the bass line in your head such that you can sing it away from the piano. You can hear where this is going. Next step, in my opinion, is just to get some basic shell voicings in your left hand so that you have something to work with as you start to introduce your right hand here. So we've got B major, so we'll just take one and seven, to D seven, one and flat seven, and now I'm just gonna move a little faster because I think you can figure it out from here, right? We just do the one and seven of each chord, um, but I'm just gonna demonstrate. Here, from the B flat seven to E flat major, I'm actually just gonna bring this flat seven here down to the three of E flat, so G. And then that just gives us better voice leading. So I did the same trick here, A minor to D to G. So you don't always have to do this, but it helps so we're not jumping all over the place. Okay, next step is we are going to arpeggiate the chords in our right hand as we um, play the left hand, right? So these are just chord tone arpeggios. Sorry, my brain froze there for a second. So um, as we're doing this, we can also work on some other patterns. And I suggest just changing it up to give yourself some more challenges until you feel like you've really got these core tones in your ear. Um, that's the point here, right? Get the core tones in your ear. So we could also do other patterns. We could do it uh, descending. Right, and you get these nice different patterns around the chord tones that are just gonna help you hear the song better. 
Now, of course, if you don't actually understand these different basic seventh chords that we're doing here, this tutorial might be a little bit advanced for you. And I would actually suggest you check out a tutorial I did a while back about the five basic and most fundamental seventh chords for um, jazz theory just in general. So next up, let's just talk about what scales we can use here in the right hand. So for, you know, major chords, we can just use a major scale, so B major. For dominant chords, we will use mixolydian, which is the same as a major scale, but with a flatted seven. And this is really all we need other than the Dorian scale. The Dorian scale being a major scale, but with a flat three and flat seven. So there we go. Next up, we can just work on one, two, three, five, like this. So we take the one, two, three, five of each scale. And so on. I would also recommend practicing this in some other patterns. So definitely descending. just like that. Really quick, if you're getting some good knowledge out of this video, please be sure to hit that like button. It really helps me out. All right, next up, let's work on an exercise called the continuous scale. So the point of this exercise is we are going to seamlessly connect from one scale to the next. So if we're playing B major here, instead of starting the D scale on D, we might actually just seamlessly switch to the next possible note in the D mixolydian scale. So. And then we'll go to G. And then E flat, mixolydian, E flat, A minor, D mixolydian, sorry, I should say A Dorian. So if you practice this more and more, you will start to really hear as the scales change and you will get more and more fluid and seamless like what I was kind of doing there toward the end. Um, and that's gonna be really amazing. Once you get to that step, you can really start getting into actual jazz improvisation here over this tune. So what we're gonna do next is start adding approach notes and enclosure patterns around our chord tones. So we should already know our chord tones really well from our chord tone arpeggios. So an approach note is, let's say we want to land on the three of B. We can actually take the two notes below it and approach that, right? So there, this D is a totally non-diatonic tone to the B major scale, but that's okay because it's an approach pattern, right? We could do the same thing from above. So let's say we're coming from the five, we want to land on a three, we could do something like this. So, that's nice. Now an enclosure is very similar, it's just around the note, it's in closing note. So we could do. It's a nice little pattern. So now we're going to try to land our chord tones on beats one and three. Okay, so let's take a look at how this will work. So let's say we're starting up here. We could do that, but you know what I think would be stronger? I want to land on the five here of, um, sorry, I wanna land on the one being D, right? So, and now I wanna land on the three of G. So, did a little, little kind of enclosure pattern here and then approached it from below. So, so that doesn't work great, right? This is a great example. We're going from the three of the G7 and if we switch to B flat mixolydian here, 
we land on E flat or even if we go up, we're landing on G, so. Mm, not very strong, right? So one, two, three. It's a three, right? We want to land a chord tone. Now we land on the five, much better. So if we start getting really good at this, adding in some different enclosures as we learn to find the right places to land. By the way, if you want some nice enclosure and approach note patterns, I believe my buddy Chad LB, also a great YouTuber, um, has a book with enclosure and approach note patterns. So shout out to Chad there. So we can start really bringing this into our continuous scale line. Bad finger in there. And so on. Now, this is a great moment to talk about something really, really important, which is fingering. One of the most common problems with this exercise is people get, uh, well, they get stuck on fingering, right? So the most important thing we can do here is follow some basic fingering rules. Number one, if you are starting on a black note, use fingers two or three. Number two, this is important. You have to start to learn, am I hearing myself going up or down from here? If you're going up, you have to cross your thumb to bring your hand position upwards and um, give yourself these fingers to keep moving up. Now, I kind of made a mistake, I think, because I, I now I'm here. I totally messed up, so I had to I had to hear more in advance and realize I need to put my pinky here, right? So when that happens, do exactly what I just did. Just stop and be like, hmm, if I'm going from here, I can't land three there. I need to land four. So I'm gonna just do this a few times. Get the proper finger habit, and now the next time you get there, you should have built a good finger habit in there. So the more you do this, and the more you practice this exercise, the more you will be building in good finger habits. Now, I'm not gonna go super into detail about left hand voicings, but this would definitely be a good point to also bring in some more pro left hand voicings, especially if you use like a Giant Steps play along that you could probably even find on YouTube, um, or obviously check out Jamie Abersold or Hal Leonard, they obviously have incredible play-alongs. I'm not gonna go into the super details of all these left-hand voicings, but again, figure out some nice um, professional sounding left-hand voicings. I've got materials actually at jazzpianoconcepts.com store if you actually wanna check some of those out. Basic Piano Voicings has all the left-hand voicings that you would need called, we refer to them as solo piano, solo piano voicings in there, but for Let's see, what I would do, I'll just show you some of the voicings I might use. This uh, B major nine, D 13. See how I'm keeping good voice leading between the voicings? Right? Um, and then uh, B flat, sorry, E flat. D, G, B flat 13, uh, E flat 9, major 9, so the F sharp 13, B major 9, F to B flat to D flat, A to D to G, uh, C sharp, F sharp, B, F minor to B flat to E flat, C sharp, F sharp, and we're back to the top, right? So if you want, you can slow down this video and steal all of my left hand voicings. I would recommend learning these at this point, and that's just a matter of learning them, practicing this with a metronome so you have all the voicings. I would maybe recommend practicing them with this rhythm on a tune like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I'm literally just hitting the chords on the and of four. 
All right, now at this point, we should be getting a lot more fluid with our improvisation. So there are two more things we need to do to really get to a great level. So number one, I want you to now start taking patterns and working them through the chord changes. So we could just take a simple arpeggio here like this, so. Okay, so what I wanna do is I want to, kind of like we molded the scales in the continuous scale as we move from chords, I wanna now mold this pattern, so. Sorry. <laughs> uh, e flat. So we're kind of just starting with this one pattern and just seeing if we can move it through the chord changes. Now that was a little bit easier than what the next step is. Now I want you to do it only ascending, right? So we're gonna have to keep moving up. So this is a really interesting, uh, more restrictive version of this exercise. And when I say moving up, I mean the bass note has to continue moving up. This is really, really fun. Um, and eventually you can just free yourself up and just start doing patterns. So sorry, at the end there, I just kind of started going into improv. But what we can do is actually combine all this stuff. So we could do a arpeggio, right, even a chord tone arpeggio, maybe we start on a different inversion, or do a nine chord instead, three, five, seven, nine. Then we switch into the continuous scale. Another trick that I wish someone had told me that you might have noticed there is sometimes you can anticipate the next chord by switching to that chord in your improvisational line before you actually land there. And that can really help you land um, really nicely. So I did. See that? So I actually did G major, but halfway through I started a little um, approach note pattern to the B flat. Let's try it here. Now, at this point, you should also be able to start working on development. You can start using more rhythmic variation and not just playing a continuous exercise, right? So. Um, a couple last things here we can do. First of all, we need to do our lick integration. So I would recommend taking a lick from someone that you love, you know, to listen to, play on Giant Step. But let's just take an example here. That's our lick. Now we need to start working on making this lick work throughout the whole tune. and so on. Now that was doing it in the exact same rhythm. We could even start placing it on, in different spots. So 
So something like that, right? Taking a lick like this and integrating it in is going to basically ensure you really, really know the lick and it becomes a part of your vocabulary. And finally, the final step in my opinion is now to actually be able to improvise this all in your head, right? Make sure you're not cheating with any finger patterns. And you can actually kind of do this throughout this whole course um, to make sure that you're really hearing things. Now, forgive me in advance for my saying. All right, well, yeah, hope I didn't cause too much pain there with my uh, scatting, but um, showing that you really know where you are, right, as you're singing this in your head, you can even work on improvising over this, and I would recommend this whenever you're walking around, whenever you're um, at work, keep it in the back of your head, keep the improvisation, the continuous scale going in your head, and before you know it, you will have giant steps completely mastered under your fingers and you will slay this if anyone tries to call it up at a jam to you know throw you off or throw everyone off um, and try to you know pump up their macho-ness by calling giant steps you are going to be good to go all right thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video please be sure to hit the like button it really helps me out also if you want to get some voicings or other specialized licks or exercises to practice, check out jazzpianoconcepts.com slash store. If you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and the bell to turn on notifications because I got content like this rolling out almost every single week of the year. All right, thank you so much and I'll see you next time.